Hello, a good afternoon and welcome to this Bright Pearl ShipStation co-hosted webinar. We're excited to welcome you today to what promises to be a, a really revealing and interesting insight into the world of Spikeball, uh, a retailer who you may recognize from uh, the TV show uh, Shark Tank. Um, we're excited to be joined today um, by Scott from Spikeball, who's going to tell us a bit about the successes they've had and kind of some of the challenges they've faced as they've scaled their business uh, uh, over the last few years. So um, a really exciting uh, webinar ahead. Um, what I'd like to do just before we get started to just run through, um, first of all, a couple of admin things. Uh, we are going to be doing a live Q&A at the end of the webinar. Um, the way it works is uh, rather than actually speaking on the phone, you uh, can post your questions into the uh, questions panel, which you should see on the control panel uh, on your screen. Uh, you can put your questions in there at any point during the webinar as you think of them, um, but we'll hold them to the end and then at the end we'll try and get through as many as we can uh, in the time we have. And, um, and after we've done that, um, any other questions we'll follow up afterwards um, offline. So in terms of the agenda, we're going to uh, do some quick introductions and then basically we're going to talk about, we're going to kind of let Scott walk us through the spike ball story and particularly focusing on the, the, the piece that is kind of core to their, their growth success and that is the technology stack, the, the technology ecosystem they have at the heart of the business. So um, he's going to give you some insight into that and the workflows and um, processes that they have used to build this highly successful retail operation. Um, and then we're going to focus in on a couple of pieces of technology, ShipStation and BrightPearl, um, which Spikeball have been using uh, to increase the efficiency um, of their core operations. And then, as I said, uh, we'll have some Q&A at the end. So without further ado, I want to introduce um, our speakers today. Scott Palmer, Chief Operations Officer from Spikeball, is going to be uh, presenting for the majority of the webinar. And then Cody Delmond from uh, ShipStation is also going to be joining us later on to talk a bit about the, uh, the ShipStation piece and how fundamentally important that is in the, uh, the overall equation. And, uh, and my name is James Scott. I'm president of Bright Pearl uh, here in North America um, and also SVP of customer success for Bright Pearl on a global basis. So uh, welcome. So before I hand over to Scott, I want to just give you a little bit of context. Um, and this, this slide here kind of talks about how at Bright Pearl we see the world of, of retail and the typical journey that a retailer goes on. Um, so what we've done is, you know, obviously this isn't an exact science, um, but what we've done uh, through our conversations with thousands of retailers over, over the last eight or so years is break this down into some sort of phases. And you can see here there are four phases, startup, growing, established, and enterprise. And on each phase, we've put sort of for guide, guidance purposes, the sort of range of revenue, uh, of annual revenue, uh, that a company typically will be in during each of these phases. So startup is kind of zero to one million, and at this stage, typically, kind of it's quite scrappy, kind of testing the product and the market um, proposition, getting your first customers, kind of seeing some early successes, and scaling the business, but pretty much doing it in a pretty scrappy way without a lot of kind of tools and technologies to, uh, to help. And then as you progress along this journey, typically you see more technology coming into the business uh, because businesses are getting more complex. And so the technology is needed to help manage the core business operations and also to give more insight into how the business is performing to help the business owner make good decisions. So, um, you know, I encourage you to use, um, to, you know, to look at this and kind of maybe think about where you are on this particular journey. Um, by the way, the employee numbers and the years tradings, uh, years trading history, these are kind of guidelines. Obviously, um, some companies can reach pretty high annual revenue figures with pretty low numbers of employees. And I think Spikeball is one of those cases, and you'll hear a bit about that in a moment. And then, of course, the the time it takes you to progress through these phases really is up, up to you. Um, but, you know, these are the, the ranges we put here are kind of typical for what we see for 80 or 90 percent of the people that we speak to. Now, obviously, as a, a business 
grows, typically um, it expands you know, into more channels, and with channels comes complexity. So whether that's a marketplace like eBay or Amazon, you know, an online uh, e-commerce platform, you know, your own website like Shopify, Magento, um, and others, or you know, maybe it's offline channels as well, like a bricks and mortar store or wholesale, uh, trade counter, uh, field sales team, pop-up stores, things like that. All these channels are great opportunities, obviously, to, to reach more buyers, but they also bring a lot more complexity. And you know, that's what really we're going to be focusing on today, letting Scott share his story about how the business grew, this complexity that was uh, inevitably introduced as the business grew, and how he managed that using technology. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Scott and uh, welcome him to the webinar. Scott, thanks for joining us. Thanks, James. Super excited to, to share the story, and uh, hopefully everyone on today is going to be able to uh, pull some cool stuff out of uh, at least our, our journey, our story here. So just real quick, give you a little bit of background on Spikeball. Um, in the 80s, the uh, product itself was around for one year, a couple of years actually, was discontinued, and then about eight years ago, uh, our founder, CEO, Chris, and a number of other individuals um, revitalized the product, brought it back to life, uh, brought the trademarks, uh, the patents, and, and started manufacturing the product itself rather than making it uh, and advertising it and marketing it as a, uh, a toy. Uh, we started marketing it more as a sport. And through the evolution of the company, um, kind of the whole uh, idea about behind sports kept growing and growing. Um, so here you're going to see a picture of the team. I uh, just realized this is actually not the most up-to-date uh, photo, so I will give a quick shout out to our newest employee. We're nine strong. Uh, Hadas Look, who is uh, uh, an awesome customer support individual for us. So um, how is the team structured today? We're a pretty flat organization. Um, just a couple managers and then everybody else um, basically gets to manage uh, their own channel, their own business, um, and kind of their own operational functions. Uh, so we have two individuals in California. We have two individuals in Pennsylvania, one in Tennessee, and uh, four of us here in Chicago. Uh, when we first started uh, growing this company, uh, and really from a full-time perspective, we had grown uh, the company up until gosh, three and a half years ago with no full-time employees. And uh, in 2013, uh, myself and Chris, our CEO who's in the middle, here holding the uh, spike ball set, uh, went full-time. And the uh, objective was to, to use systems and tools to streamline our process. I think we internally joked that you know, we were going to grow this company and, and only have to be two full-time employees. But that being in our mind, um, uh, we use that to drive uh, the theories and the processes around how we run and operate the business. So a little bit more about the actual business and company itself, just uh, uh, some uh, outlets that we've been mentioned on. In 2015, uh, we were named 139 on uh, within the Inc. 500 list uh, and the number 12 fastest growing privately held consumer uh, product company uh, in the United States, and the number six fastest here in in Illinois. So we are headquartered in Illinois. Uh, we are a Chicago-based company, uh, although our product is used on the beach. It's also used uh, on grass, but um, a lot of exciting things happening today. We can go to the uh, next slide here real quick, James. Um, so obviously you mentioned that we are a company. Spikeball itself is also somewhat recognized as a sport. The sport itself is called Round Net. Um, we are more or less the premium brand for the sport, and the sport is something that we've invented and we are continuing to kind of groom and help uh, provide a, a cultural aspect to it. So this photo here you're seeing is, is the community of, of the company and, and of the sport and of the product. Uh, this is a photo that was taken uh, in 2014 at our Nationals Spike Ball Tournament. Uh, we had, I believe, over 100 teams from, gosh, 15, 20 different states here in the U.S. Uh, come and compete in a nationals tournament. 
that tournament uh, was then eventually uh, turned into some video footage that you can find out online. Uh, some awesome uh, uh, ESPN-esque uh, coverage looked uh, looked pretty cool. It was a it was a fun day. And so, to the uh, the product side, so Spike Ball is a uh, a product and a company. So we are uh, basically more or less the manufacturers and the importers uh, of a, an item uh, and a number of other products. It is made up of a ball, a net, as you see here. Uh, it's played two on two, very similar to volleyball. We say it's the love child of volleyball and Foursquare. Uh, rather than hitting over the net like you would in volleyball or beach volleyball, uh, you're hitting a ball off the net. So when we make our products, we make them, we bring them in, uh, and they are basically packaged uh, and ready to ship. So we are a lick and, lick and stick operation. Uh, we're not doing any assembly here out of our uh, facilities here in the U.S., so we are bringing in finished goods. And last but not least, uh, Shark Tank Survivor. I'm going to ask or answer some questions after the uh, of the presentation if there are some questions. But uh, just overall, awesome experience, awesome exposure. Uh, we had some pretty crazy growth going into Shark Tank, and and uh, that growth kept uh, continuing after Shark Tank. And uh, we definitely saw a little bit of a nice boost, but uh, we were growing nonetheless, and it was just uh, another great opportunity that uh, we, we are happy that we had the, the chance to take advantage of. So a little bit more about kind of our operations. So we sell over five uh, websites or Shopify websites. We are using Shopify for our web fronts. Uh, we're on three Amazon uh, accounts. So right now we are not an Amazon vendor. We are uh, shipping product as Amazon FBA as well as fulfilled by merchants. So we manage our loads at the moment um, and have been for, for a fairly long time. We're on eBay. We have six warehouses throughout the world, uh, a combination of self-managed, which is our main DC in southern Illinois, uh, some 3PLs that uh, we're working with, and uh, another uh, hybrid 3PL self-managed warehouse uh, that we uh, work with as well. So uh, locations are in Australia, the Netherlands, China, Canada, and the United States. We're in uh, over 3,000 plus retailers nationwide that's uh, physical locations. And we have about 500,000 uh, individuals playing spike ball throughout the, uh, the country. Um, and uh, of those 500,000, we have uh, some more competitive individuals. Uh, part of our business is not just the product itself, uh, but we market the product through uh, tournaments that happen uh, nationally. Last year, we ran about 250 events. And this year, we're expecting to do about 350 events. And those are ran by both us and just uh, active players of our sports. So. On the technology side, uh, we like to consider ourselves, or at least I personally, from the operations perspective, you know, uh, some might think of us as a, a product company that uses technology, but within the operations side of the house, uh, I feel that we are a technology company that happens to use that technology to sell, sell some product. And so with technology, um, you know, we have nine awesome, awesome people on the team, and uh, how do we make those individuals even better. Uh, we provide them access with some incredible uh, technology uh, stacks. And so without technology and without creating efficiencies, um, higher levels of insight of inventory, uh, ultimately it's more difficult to keep the customer happy, which is uh, the end goal. So here's a little bit of uh, some of our secret weapons, if you will, so uh, for probably the most of you, uh, Amazon and Shopify or Amazon in some form of a web platform uh, is where we are having transactions take place. Help Scout is what we use for customer support. ShipStation, which we will talk about here shortly, is what we're using to really run our warehouse. Our warehouse actually uh, manages pretty much all the fulfillment uh, out of our self-managed location through ShipStation. So, 
a little bit unique in that they're not hopping in the Bright Pearl. They are doing everything through ShipStation. Uh, Shipwire, kind of global distribution, Bright Pearl, Slack, OmniFocus for some task management, uh, Basecamp and Bitrix uh, for kind of internal communication. Something that we have going on internally is no one sends emails to each other. Uh, no one is allowed to email one another. All communication is done through our own uh, internal intranet. Uh, we also try to have as little phone calls as possible. Uh, to be honest, we're trying to reduce that even more now. Um, but uh, the only email uh, emails that we have going back and forth are uh, with with customers. And then uh, Evernote and 8x8 is our uh, telephone technology. So diving a little bit deeper into the systems and tools, we have uh, ShipStation and Bright Pearl. These are just uh, two screenshots of the uh, the two platforms that we're going to talk today, and, and really the two that we rely on the most, for the most part. A um, couple little insights on the uh, internal dashboards that we're using on a regular basis uh, within those two tools as well. So real quick, to let everyone know how we found ShipStation as well as how we found Bright Pearl, is that we are have always been big uh, fans of uh, Shopify. And I, along with Chris, had been familiar and been using Shopify for, for a few years prior to us actually working together uh, three and a half years ago. And Shopify being such a strong platform, we decided to look through Shopify's uh, partner section to find the best solutions to, to use. And that's how we found ShipStation. Fast forward about a year and now we're in love with ShipStation, going back and forth looking at what works with Shopify, what works with ShipStation, and really cross-referencing all the ERP type platforms that might be available and, and testing almost all of them. And that's how we ended up coming across Bright Pearl. Bright Pearl being the one that uh, seemed to have uh, the most uh, available resources and could scale at what we were looking to do with the business. Um, Bright Pearl is, is, uh, has been a really big part of, of just in general our scalability. So I'll hand it over to James real quick to, to talk a little bit about uh, Bright Pearl. Bright Pearl is a um, uh, cloud-based um, piece of software for retailers. Um, it's you know, commonly described as ERP software. Um, it helps independent retailers manage the heart of the business. And we do that by bringing together the things that retailers um, most often uh, need uh, to run the business uh, into one place. Um, so that, you know, namely uh, order data, inventory data, uh, customer data, so full sort of CRM, uh, accounting and financial information, so all the kind of, you know, trading accounts that, uh, that, um, that you know, happen as you're, trading every day and then uh, and then all this sort of reporting that you need to get the insight um, in order to make decisions on how to move the business forward and you know we put that all in one piece of software one platform that connects all to all the different sales channels that you sell through um, and enable you to basically get your core business under control have very you know strong core operational stability and then, of course, because all this data is in one place, uh, you then have the information and the insight that you need to be able to scale the business uh, going forwards. So that's Bright Pearl. It's been great working with uh, Spike Ball. Certainly kept us on our toes, but um, you know, it's been, I think, a really, a really great relationship. Um, and let me just uh, yeah, hand over to Cody to tell you a bit about uh, ShipStation. Hey, good afternoon, guys. You've got Cody here at ShipStation, and what Scott described was a perfect example of ShipStation's benefit. As he touched on, they have orders coming in from all these different places. So ShipStation provides a ton of benefit there, and then we can consolidate all these different order sources into one place. So if you do have multiple Shopify sites or multiple Amazon listings, eBay, you've got orders coming in, filtered in through Bright Pearl, ShipStation brings all of these into a central location. So instead of jumping around to all these different sites every day, and then worst case scenario, copy and pasting addresses or even going to the postal office, 
uh, all of these addresses are centralized in one location. So cloud-based, anywhere you have internet, you can log in, see all of your information clearly available there. We integrate with over 100 different selling channels, so wherever you're selling online, we're going to be able to connect to bring in these orders. Same thing on the carrier side. We offer a ton of different carrier integrations. So if sometimes you ship USPS, but other times you ship UPS, or occasionally you use Shipwire for fulfillment, things like that, we can accommodate all of these moving parts into one central location. Location. For USPS, we provide a free stamps.com account, which gives you access to discounted USPS rates. And again, big benefit here is going to be time savings, okay. automating this whole process. So if certain products ship a certain way or certain customers need to receive a certain type of service, you can use ShipStation to automate all of that process. We're going to be able to specify automation based on SKU level, based on different stores, even different businesses. A lot of our users will use a single ShipStation account to manage several different totally unrelated businesses all in one place. So again, time savings, reliability, automating the process process and taking the guesswork out of your user's hand. From there, you can also wirelessly connect printers. Since we are cloud-based, it's really useful in that you can link these devices to your account and then print these labels on the go. We were the first in our space to come up with a mobile app, so at this point, we even have users who will pull up their orders on the go from their iPhone, from their Android, and then remotely print these labels back to their warehouse, back to their office. As Scott mentioned, when they started, they were a very small team, so we make it especially useful for individuals in that type of situation. Maybe you're wearing a lot of different hats. Maybe you have one person that's trained up on your warehouse operations. Uh, we take all of that away from one physical location and let you access that information on the go. So all of this is geared towards wherever you sell, however you ship. We help you get those orders out the door with less of a headache and much less time. Awesome. Thanks, Cody. Um, one of the things I will touch upon here in a minute is just uh, some of the awesome automation capabilities that are available within uh, ship station. We use these automations to kind of tell the warehouse uh, what certain things need to be placed with a certain shipment. So, for example, uh, if an order has more than multiple uh, three line items on the order, uh, it will then tell the warehouse based off of some tags and some automation that we need to uh, provide a, a packing note with that particular order. So. A little bit more into uh, just in general spike ball technology, our technology, and why why we went and, and looked for uh, a platform like Bright Pearl. So in the past, we had ShipStation and we had our Shopify stores. And as we started to grow, we would add Amazon to ShipStation and another Shopify store to, to ShipStation. And Everything was going really well, but then we needed to start having a little bit more view uh, of real-time numbers, real-time revenue uh, numbers, real-time inventory, uh, allocated inventory versus safety stock inventory. As we continued to get more and more uh, uh, customers and, and started selling on more and more sites and platforms, uh, we started to find that at any given moment, our inventory levels could drop significantly from possibly a retail placing a new order or a retailer placing a new order or a promotion happening on Amazon. And for example, let's say a retailer had placed an order and it wasn't to ship for two or three weeks, but then that particular week when the order came in, uh, we also had a, an increase in Amazon sales. Well, we had really no true way of, of allocating the inventory to that retail customer. And so we would get dangerously low with inventory. And at that point, we'd have to scramble around. So we didn't have a real real insight on inventory levels. And with Bright Pearl, we're able to actually keep track of inventory uh, in pretty much every warehouse that we work with, whether it's a 3PL or a self-managed location. Uh, in addition to the inventory management, we also get to manage inventory coming in, so purchase orders. So the product being produced, we can place those orders in Bright Pearl track when they should be received, track when, uh, if there's delays. So within a particular product, I can see that I have 10,000 units on hand, 10, 000, or 1,000 units available, 5,000 units allocated, and I'm receiving another 30,000 units in two months. And that full view of the supply chain from the product perspective uh, really allowed us to have a, make better decisions both with our customers as well as how we sell our product and how we bring our product in. 
at the end of the day, too, uh, running everything through Bright Pearl, it allowed us to have more efficiencies when it came to trafficking these orders. All of our orders come from multiple channels. We will then review those orders within Bright Pearl and determine where we need to allocate them based off of inventory, based off of where they're shipping, uh, based off of uh, the customer as well. So we'll give you a quick little insight on, on kind of how the structure is. And this is a little bit more simplified version, and we'll talk a little bit more uh, on an additional slide. But we have our main sales channels, Amazon, Shopify, uh, eBay. Uh, and we also then have email requests or support requests. So somebody might request a replacement part. Somebody might email us a purchase order. All of those types of requests, all those transactions will dump into Bright Pearl and we'll traffic those, those particular items. So if it's a part, we can determine that it should be shipped out of our Canada warehouse. Uh, or if it's a, a, a particular set or product that we're carrying in our main DC, then it'll come out of there. It'll then, from Bright Pearl, dump into ShipStation. And from ShipStation, through some of the automations that are in place, we can determine what facility is going to actually fulfill the product. It can be fulfilled out of our DC through the US. It can be fulfilled through Amazon FBA services. Or if it's a global uh, order needing to go to a customer in Australia, we can push it through to Shipwire, which is the software platform that we're using for our uh, 3PLs throughout the globe. Now, something that's interesting about this setup with Bright Pearl and ShipStation is that all the warehouses can act as backups for one another. So if we run out of a particular product, let's say in our DC here in the US, we have the ability through ship station to push that order to Amazon Fulfillment. So now Amazon Fulfillment now becomes a warehouse for us that we can tap into. And so every warehouse that we have can back each other, uh, each other up. And that's kind of the beauty, at least we think, in this system. So it allows us to carry less inventory and, and have safety stock that's available pretty much in, in multiple locations. So using Bright Pearl, just to dive a little bit deeper on how we're using it, um, we use it to analyze inventory flow on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and on a monthly basis. Uh, as some of you might know, if you receive maybe a retail order or an order coming from a retail customer, uh, that can knock out your inventory very quickly. So we can use Bright Pearl to put in future orders coming in from retailers. We can use it to see how much inventory is, is uh, getting worked through from a particular channel like Amazon, how quickly we're selling through in a specific warehouse, let's say like in Canada through uh, spikeball.com sales. And so just this insight and this, this total view of into the inventory level, it's, it's, it's always been awesome for us and, and we're finding that it's becoming more and more important as we continue to grow. Uh, we also then can measure revenue and, and, and have a better job of forecasting inventory flow. Uh, we can report on sales specific to channels, specific to SKUs, so I can see uh, spikeball.com, how many of X units uh, is our shipping or has been sold. I can see what our top products are through Amazon. Uh, I can also see what uh, a particular products sell best on specific channels. Again, tapping into the safety stock uh, versus cycle stock. Inventory, inventory, inventory. For us, uh, the rule of thumb is that we never want to have to say no to a customer. And uh, operating in a just-in-time fashion having you know, 60 to 90 day lead times, having real insight into where our inventory is, what product is on its way uh, from China, uh, when it's due to arrive in the warehouse, as well as what is due to ship from customers who have placed advanced orders, uh, having that insight is, is, is huge for us. And knowing exactly what's on hand at any given moment, you know, uh, let's say customer support wanting to uh, fulfill a replacement part they can go in and create an order. And from within that order, as they're typing out the SKU, see literally how many of that particular SKU is sitting on the shelf, and also how many of that particular SKU is on order. And then they can drill down into that particular order and see when it's due to arrive so they can tell the customer 
uh, when they can expect the replacement part. So diving just a little bit deeper into how the whole system works, as I said, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, really what I want everyone to get from this is Bright Pearl allows us to segment our customers and segment our product. So we don't just sell to one consumer. We sell to physical education programs all over the country. We sell to camps and recreation departments. We sell to retailers. We sell to sporting goods retailers. We sell to beach shops. And so the way the current system works is depending on where that particular transaction is taking place, you're being funneled and tagged so that we can keep track of what revenue looks like specific to the sales channel and specific to the actual product within that channel. And there's a lot of uh, cross-pollination, if you will, between those, but uh, a customer will come in and, for example, well, let's say a wholesaler wants to, or a retailer wants to carry our product, uh, will receive that request into our support system based off of the size, uh, size of the customer, the type of customer, they're going to be funneled to a different area within our website, within our um, CRM databases, and then provided access to different locations to buy product, which then funneled right back into Bright Pearl. So when we said we have multiple Shopify stores, we have spikeball.com. That sells directly to the consumer. We have a website that's just for physical education and recreation departments. And that allows us to keep track of all these sales coming from those particular uh, channels and we can determine how we allocate, let's say, marketing dollars or resources to those channels based off of the number of units we're shipping or the revenue or the profitability of those channels. And then once those purchases are made, uh, they funnel down into Bright Pearl and then again they go to ShipStation where we then determine based off of the location uh, where they're going to be going. Now one thing that we, uh, that I haven't mentioned really is that our warehouse doesn't operate in Bright Pearl. So our team of nine are the ones managing most of these orders. So just to put things into perspective, uh, right now we're averaging about 832 units or products a day, uh, leaving uh, one warehouse or another. Uh, to put that in comparison, uh, that same time or this same time last year, we were only doing about 257. Now, peak season for us has always been the holidays around December. And we average about uh, 1,300 items going through the system, or 1,300 uh, 1, uh, particular products being processed. So what's been really important for us is to make sure that whatever systems we're using, they're all extremely scalable. And so right now, what is traditionally our slowest time of the year is already approaching our busiest time of the year last year. Uh, and that just kind of gives you an idea of just the growth rate and, and really what we're trying to use Bright Pearl for. And the hope is that we'll be able to do uh, 10 times that amount uh, or more as we continue to grow through the systems that we have in place. And, and we've, we've chosen the tools that we use specifically with that in mind. So, just to give you a little bit of insight on how we work, an order comes into Bright Pearl. It sits in uh, the Bright Pearl uh, queue. It gets reviewed specifically by uh, an individual named Michael, who's our operations manager. He is the master of all systems. Um, and that product will come in with allocated, or that order will come in with an allocated product, which actually is uh, denoted by this little green uh, check. And that says that, all right, an order is in the system, and it's, we have product available, and we're ready to fulfill it. At that point, what we'll do is we'll push it to Bright Pearl, and this is where, uh, I'm sorry, we'll push it to ShipStation, and this is where my warehouse is living. So every day uh, at 10, uh, 12, and 2, they're hopping into ShipStation, and they're looking to see what orders need to be processed or, or are in the queue. And that order will show up coming from the Bright Pearl store, and I'll give them the order number. After that order is fulfilled, my warehouse manager on the, the actual DC floor, who's actually working uh, in the warehouse, she'll fulfill the order, process it, 
using some of the great functions and features of tapping into FedEx and UPS that ShipStation has. And it'll push all that information right back up to Bright Pearl. So then when I, my customer support manager gets a request saying, where's my order, or has that particular uh, order shipped, they can go directly into the, the view uh, of that order and see that there's actually the tracking information right within the account record. So you can see the green check, the box, and the truck have all been lit up green. That means that the product was available, the product has been packed, or the order has been packed, and now it has been shipped. And she can just reference this particular item or this order and pull up the tracking number right there and then. So she's not having to go to ups.com or multiple systems to track that particular order. So similar, uh, we will process our wholesale orders, but now those wholesale and retail orders are coming in a little bit differently. They're coming in as purchase orders. And we have a wholesale manager whose job is to basically receive those purchase orders, receive them, and enter them into the system. Now, the way we do this is sometimes those orders need to be fulfilled immediately. And those are processed very similar to uh, a .com order coming from our, our website. But there are a lot of times that these people are placing orders that are to be shipped in the future. And when they're to be shipped in the future, this is where we use some of the automa automations and tags available within both ShipStation and BrightPearl. So this particular order, uh, actually, if you want to go back one more real quick, James. Um, this particular order, you can see that we marked it as a future retailer shipment. And in this case, we didn't allocate any product to it. We knew that we were uh, really close and possibly running out of inventory. We would allocate product to this so that when orders come in from the other channels, uh, came in, it would still kind of hold product for it. But in this case, we have marked this as a future order to be fulfilled in a later date. And now I can actually run reports for next month or two months from now and see what orders are in the pipeline. And this is where we start using it for forecasting and demand planning to determine what is already in the system as purchase orders, rather than having these purchase orders just kind of sit in a folder to be processed later. Now, once these orders are reviewed, we'll push them down to ShipStation, and here's where we use some of the ShipStation automations. You can see the, uh, an order here highlighted and then on the left-hand side, tags. Well, those tags, based off of the automations that are in ShipStation, uh, can be uh, brought up or associated to that order based off of mapped shipping options, mapped product, and a number of other items. So in this case, this order might be telling my warehouse through the tags, all right, it's more than one light item, or it's a wholesale order, which might be red. That means the warehouse knows that anything that has a red tag associated to it should actually receive a packing slip. And that purple tag, and we actually have a reference document uh, that's laminated right next to our printer, or right next to our uh, computer station that says what each color tag represents. This one, in this case, might represent uh, that it is a future order and that additional information is to come so that they should start packing the order but not fulfill it. The beauty of this is if this is an LTL shipment or a full truckload shipment, we can take that bill of lading number, we can actually open up this order, and uh, within the order say that it needs to be marked as shipped, and another screen will pop up allowing us to actually put the tracking number in. So now we can actually enter the bill of lading number in here instead of a UPS tracking number or any other notes we might want to use. Then submit, mark it as shipped. It takes it out of ShipStation and pushes it all the way back up to, uh, to Bright Pearl. And um, in this particular case, it's just a tracking reference number. But uh, in that same location, it would say ship, uh, ShipStation, it would say, when it was marked, so that's letting us know roughly when it left the warehouse, and then it'll have the bill of lading number uh, right within the actual order itself. So now we're keeping track of that versus uh, filing all of the bill of ladings uh, down at the warehouse level. And in addition to all this, we don't have a photo of it. We can actually take a photo. The warehouse manager can take a photo of that bill of lading, email it to uh, the operations manager in charge of wholesale, and then he can associate that particular bill of lading under the account. 
and save it as a file associated to that order so that if we ever need to go back and look at it, it's available. And Great. that is it for me. Great, thank you, Scott. What a what a wonderful insight into uh, into your marvelous business. I think um, I think it's fascinating to see see. You know, we all will um, hear about software, but it's always really powerful to see it being used in the wild for real. Um, and some of those examples you gave were really uh, insightful and helpful. So thank you for being so transparent and open and kind of sharing how you operate, and I hope our, our listeners found it uh, useful. Um, what we're going to do now is just invite questions from those who are uh, listening in live. As I said before, um, your GoToWebinar control panel, which should be on your screen, will show uh, a little section called Questions. If you click on the little arrow next to it to open that up, um, you should be able to post a question. and. Uh, We'll try and get through as many of these as we can. Okay. Well, I've got one here from Chris. He says, how are you handling orders with different levels of priority within ShipStation? Do you get some push through first, depending on priority status? Definitely. Great question. So uh, we can actually use the tags within BrightPearl. Today, right now, we're not completely using those tags uh, regarding priority. Uh, because we're a, a small team, depending on what the priorities are, uh, we are chatting on an everyday basis. So we'll typically use chatting as a way to let the team know what needs to be done. Now, if an order gets pushed down to the warehouse, our operations manager will actually reach out to the warehouse and just make them aware of that particular order. Got it. Great. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, please post your questions in the uh, control panel. And um, we've got a, about another five minutes if we if we have uh, questions. Um, one here from Sean. He says, uh, "This is a great one for Scott. What is your favorite part of your job?" Um, awesome question. So I think just the culture and some of the things that we're doing as a company. It's great to get to know awesome people. Uh, we're building a community around our product and our sport and uh, really being able to connect people. So a lot of times we get to hear some great stories around how our products and our services have, um, crazy enough, changed people's lives. That in itself is probably the most rewarding part of, of the job. And I, I think that's probably uh, uh, very similar for a lot of the other individuals within the organization. Um, we're really big into trying to develop community um, the technology that we're using here with Bright Pearl just happens to make it so that we can possibly spend more time on the community side and less time on the day-to-day -day management of, of work. Great question and great answer. I think it's incredible. I mean, 500,000 players of the game. I mean, that that is a, a large number of people. That's a very you know, building communities are hard. You know, that's. Uh, just doing that on its own would be a phenomenal achievement, um, let alone kind of running a, a retail business um, at the same time. And I realize they're related, but it's, um, you know, I think there are many retailers I speak to, you know, obviously building the brand is kind of the hardest bit. How do you differentiate from your competitors? Um, and the, you know, the aspect of a, you know, brand advocates is something that's very hard to build. Um, and you've really, really done an amazing job of that. Thank you. A uh, question here from uh, Jury, uh, probably pronouncing that wrong. Uh, as, an account, as an accountant, uh, so this seems like a Bright Pearl question. So it's about accounting. She, um, this person's an accountant using Bright Pearl in conjunction with QuickBooks and having kind of questions about customizing reports and what, what's possible there. Um, so actually, most of our customers use BrightPo uh, without QuickBooks. Um, you know, BrightPo is a full retail accounting system, and um, what we tend to find is just because it's not familiar to people that um, you know a lot of people kind of uh, you know use the two in parallel. Um, but what I'm happy to do is follow up afterwards and, and connect you with some people that can kind of answer some of your specific questions and see whether it's um, even necessary for you to be spending money on two pieces of software when one maybe will do the job. So um, I'll follow up on that one afterwards. One last one in. 
Um, is your customer, this is one for you, Scott, um, is your customer support at all connected, you know, between Help Scout and 8x8 and Brightpill? Yeah, so right now, uh, the way our support is connected is that they will operate on multiple windows. Um, so there are some integrations available within Help Scout. Um, I know Zendesk has a lot of other integrations available. Uh, we happen to use Help Scout because it's a little bit simpler to use. Um, but uh, what will typically happen is we'll operate between two different systems, um, possibly multiple screens. So Bright Pro will be on one, Help Scout will be on the other. Um, I know that there's some additional uh, re uh, items coming out within Bright Pro that would, let's say, allow us to not have to have a separate um, credit card processing module open. Um, but uh, for the most part, we're doing it where we, we have multiple modules uh, and we're logged into those modules to to work. Great, thanks, Scott. I think that's the last question, and we're kind of at time, so let's wrap things up there. I want to uh, again say a massive thank you to Scott for joining us today and telling us the spike ball story. So, Scott, thank you very much, and um, also uh, a big thank you to Cody for uh, participating and co-hosting uh, from ShipStation. Um, thank you, Cody. You got it. Appreciate it, guys. You know, we wish uh, Spikeball all the best of success, and we'll be watching you carefully. We have a, a set here in the office. I must recommend against playing it on a hard floor. It's not quite as much fun. Um, but uh, <laughs> I encourage everyone listening to go and purchase a, a Spikeball set, and it's a lot of fun in the garden. So, uh, yeah, best of luck, and thanks, everybody, for tuning in.